The number one symptom of a testosterone deficiency for both men and women is literally cognitive decline. You need a, an optimized uh, set of hormones from you know thyroid, from testosterone, and from your pancreas uh, as you age, because if you don't, your body is going to start declining. We are in an environment now where people are being absolutely decimated from all angles. And you know the biggest tool in the tool belt is optimizing your hormones. Okay, this is Dr. Joy Kong. I am so excited that you can join me because I have an incredible guest today, Jay Campbell. So we met at A4M meeting, you know, huge international, you know, anti-aging meeting, and you are actually a four-time international best-selling art author and also men's physique champion. Incredible. Um, and you have a very influential podcast. You are, uh, you've been dedicating your life to teaching men and women to optimize their health. And um, I'm super excited for you to come in and, and help us understand of how to uh, maximize, especially in the aspects of hormone health. And of course, uh, testosterone is really what I want to cover because, you know, everyone knows the benefits of testosterone in both men and women, um, you know, not only for, for their sex drive and, and also for their weight control, but heart health. So um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your journey and how you came to become such an expert in this area. Sure. Uh, first off, it's an honor to be here. I'm grateful uh, to be here and talking with you. I'm always humbled and, as I say, privileged to speak to people about things that I uh, enjoy speaking about and obviously have a profound level of awareness about. So uh, whenever I get this opportunity, I want to say, you know, in the spirit of gratitude, thank you. And also to all the people that will eventually watch this, um, you know, again, I'm grateful that I have a chance to speak to you too. So for my story, you know, I'll give a really summation uh, anyone who knows me has probably heard this a couple of times, but, uh, you know, I basically was kicked in the testicles when I was 29 years old, uh, an ex, I'm an ex professional basketball player. So I was still playing at a really high level at a men's competitive league in uh, West Los Angeles. And, you know, I just crumbled over and went to the sideline and somebody subbed in for me, but about four or five weeks later, I started just having debilitating injuries, soreness. My lower back was killing me. I just didn't feel right. So I went to the doctor and at the time um, I was a high level sales guy. I worked for the Los Angeles times. This is way back in like 1998, 1999. I don't remember, but I know it was around then. And uh, my PPO doctor was, you know, that was not like to say joy. There's no coincidence as only synchronicities, but uh, he recommended me to an endocrinologist. And it turned out that the endocrinologist was a world renowned Harvard educated guy in uh, Orange County by the name of Dr. Raymond Scruggs. And when I went to see him, he was like, look, man, you just need to, I just need to take your uh, a blood panel and, and look at your blood testosterone. And I was like, why would you want to do that? And he's like, just trust me. So I was like, okay, cool. And sure enough, it came back and I had like the testosterone levels of a, you know, hypogonadal male in his eighties, right? It was like something two, 220 or 230. I don't remember. I still have the lab work saved, but he's like, look, I can put you on a level of therapeutic testosterone and HCG. Uh, and I didn't know what HCG meant that at that time, but he's like, you know, I can get you on that and I can restore you and uh, you'll be right as rain. So he's like, go home, talk to your fiance at the time, who's now my long gone. She was my first wife, but, uh, you know, to ask her, you know, get confirmation from her. And so what I did, you know, her name was Kelly. I said, you know, are you cool with this? And she's like, well, look, you're a smart guy. Yeah, sure. Right. So he sent me First, first time I went into his office, and his nurse injected me. But then after that, they sent me the injections in the mail and stuff like that. Again, I remember now, it was back in 1999. I was like right under the age of 30. I was like a month away from turning 30. But as he said, you know, I started to administer um, the injections myself. She, my fiance, ex-wife, uh, you know, did the first couple because I was like scared shitless of needles. I was like, how can I do this? But, uh, you know, after eight or nine weeks, I literally felt like Superman. I mean, I was like, oh my God, you know, and again, I was using a very low therapeutic dose. Again, this was a very advanced guy who knew what he was doing back in 1999 when almost no doctors knew. I mean, even today, almost no doctors understand this, but reality was, is that I felt so good when I went back in for my checkup, he was like, okay, cool. We can withdraw. And I was like, no, you're not withdrawing me. Like, there's no way. Like I look at my life now is like, you know, pre and post therapeutic testosterone. So after that, I became like just this massive student of this. Uh, you know, I read everything I could get my hands on. Now I have a, in, from a college standpoint, 
uh, a minor in molecular bio, right? So I was kind of a geeky, nerdy science person. Um, so I was reading studies. I was going on PubMed, Medline. I was getting access to everything that I could. But at that time, again, back in, two, say, 2000 to 2003, there was very little information. You know, unless you could read Russian or Bulgarian, there was not very much on um, using testosterone. Um, so I started to, like, go into the um, clinical space and community, and I found guys that were suffering from like AIDS or wasting diseases or burning, you know, uh, you know, been traumatized through burn injuries and whatnot. And, you know, you'd find some people like Fringe who had written about using therapeutic testosterone. So I just started, like I said, immersing myself and understanding the science behind it. And, you know, then at the same time, tinkering with the various delivery systems, you know, at that time I was still with Dr. Scruggs. I worked with him for five years, but, you know, I used transdermal, which was absolutely at that time, not, um, not perfected. It was horrible. Um, it didn't work. I was really moody and all, and, you know, just didn't feel right because again, they didn't understand how, like how to create this solution in the cream so that it would, you know, go through the blood, cross the blood vein barrier through the skin points and stuff. They also didn't know about transcrotal, which we'll talk about later. But so, you know, I was always experimenting with whatever various delivery systems were out there, of course, through him. Um, and, you know, just to fast forward the whole, you know, conversation, you know, to, to this, like, I just became this, like, you know, bookish science nerd on how to use therapeutic testosterone. So I'd say 10 years later, you know, I got close to turning 40. One of my good friends was like, dude, you got to write a book about this. He's like, you know, more about this than 99% of doctors, you know, he's like, you got to put it out there. Um, but you know, one statement to say would be at during that same time period, you know, people would always like comment, like they would be impressed at the way I look physically. And, you know, they would ask me and I'd always like, well, it's because I use therapeutic testosterone. So I'd always get like the looks of interesting, tell me more, or what are you on steroids? Get out of here. You know? So it was like always one of those two things, um, you know, that people would like aggregate towards me to find out about it. So it was, it was a very interesting time. I personally felt like the demonization of testosterone and hormones myself, right. Because of the way people would be. And, and again, the media has brainwashed, you know, millions of people all over the world that, you know, testosterone is evil and it's, you know, performance enhancement and all these other things. So it's like, I experienced, you know, the gamut of like the, the acceptance of using therapeutic testosterone versus like, oh my God, that's appalling. Like, how could you do that? Right. So um, I first asked or sent an email to Rick Collins, who's a very famous attorney uh, in the, you know, he was in the, like the worldwide wrestling NFL professional baseball. And I just basically just sent him a, you know, a cold pitch email and said, Hey, look, if a non uh, practicing, you know, or non-licensed medical person was to write a book on using therapeutic testosterone, like what would be the risk to me? And literally within one day, he sent me an email back and he didn't know me from Adam. And I was at that point, I was nobody um, telling me that, you know, that it would be needed, but at the same time, there's a risk, you know, I'm an attorney. So I'm going to tell you that all it would take is like one Senator to get a bug up their ass on you. And like, they could investigate you. So, so I was like, oh, I'm not going to do it. Uh, but thankfully, I sent the white paper, which I had sent to him, you know, on the book, which was about a four or five page PDF of what I wanted to write about and talk about to Nelson Virgil. And Nelson Virgil was the guy who wrote the first book, Testosterone, um, A Man's Guide. And he, again, you know, as I always say, stepping on the shoulders of giants, wrote the book coming from the place of a man who was uh, diagnosed with HIV. I mean, he essentially was dying. And so he investigated, I mean, at least his diagnosis was that he was dying, uh, like a lot of guys that had HIV 20 years ago. But, uh, you know, he was investigating it using testosterone and whatever else, growth hormone and various other agents to survive. And that's why his book that he wrote with another doctor, Dr. Michael Mooney, was called Built to Survive. And they were basically literally like talking about how to use these drugs to survive a quote unquote death sentence with HIV. Um, and so he had read the white paper, too, because I had just found his email on Google and he was, he's a native from Venezuela. And he came back like three or four months later after I had shelved the deal. And he was like, I don't know who you are, but he's like, this is unbelievable. And you have to put, you know, this into the world. Here's my cell phone number. Call me. So then at that point, it was like in 2014, uh, I called him and then him and I started talking. He became a close friend of mine. He helped me write the book. And then the first book, I mean, the book was done, but he helped me formulate it for the marketplace. The book came out in 2015 in November, became the, you know, quickly became the number one selling book of all time on testosterone. And then from that book, 
I met amazing, you know, people like yourself, doctors, physicians, researchers, uh, you know, through various conferences and networking and stuff like that. And that led to me writing a bunch of other books on like health optimization, fasting, you know, and then of course my masterpiece doctor uh, book on hormones came out in 2018, which is still the number one selling and, you know, the world's leading book. It's called testosterone optimization therapy Bible. Uh, and it has a whole section, as you know, in there on women. So, I mean, it's got all sorts of stuff, 600 pages. I mean, it's so big, it's worthless today because most people can't read a book that's like 50 pages. You know, they're so distracted with all the nonsense. Um, but, you know, that's kind of fast forward to where, you know, I am today. So, you know, it went from just a guy that just was in the right place at the right mm -hmm. time and found out about it to like this guy now who's like, you know, considered one of the world's subject matter experts on hormones. And I like to think that, you know, nothing is coincidental. It was all just a synchronicity. It was part of my experience and my mission. Right. Right. So maybe that kick in the, in the testicles was Literally, that kick in the, the nuts for the world. Is the <laughs> yeah. Right. And right. It, well, it takes a guy of your kind of drive and intensity to actually, you know, get to the bottom of this and, and right. get that breath knowledge and then share with everybody. Yeah. It's fantastic. So, so the Bible, yeah, very interesting. Maybe you can break down the Bible a little bit for people. So it's, it's, it, you know, easily digestible in 20, 30 minutes. Sure. Um, so if a person, you know, I have a few questions. First of all, uh, you know, a person can go to integrated doctor and get hormone replacement. And if they do in your, in your mind, what will be the ideal form of replacement? Because there are creams, there are injections, and there are also pellets. Like what, what are your thoughts on replacement? This, I think we're, we're really talking about men right now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I could talk about women too. So I will correct you as I do everybody else. You don't want to use the term replacement, right? Because if you use the term replacement versus optimization, you're basically replacing a hormone that is cessating as we age, right? So we don't want to replace it. We want to optimize it. And that's why I took my first book, which was the TRT manual, which was testosterone replacement therapy to <laughs> TOT, which oh. is testosterone optimization, which pretty much most of the doctors in the space say that now, because it is true. It's about optimizing it as we age and not replacing it because obviously it's cessating, but you're technically right, right? But at the end of the day, um, it really comes down to the individual patient and adherence, right? Because some people are not going to inject themselves. The testosterone, injectable testosterone preparations are now very, you know, um, highly resolvable and they can go through a very thin, fine gauge needle and you can inject in like the abdominal fat or the, you know, upper gluteal fat pad. So it's again, painless for somebody that doesn't have that fear. So, you know, the answer is really, what is a patient going to adhere to? Now, I, I say that, um, but, you know, there's definitely some delivery systems that are fraught with problems and errors. Uh, and I'm happy to explain that, you know, to you or why that is. Um, but for the most part, men and women equally uh, are going to do best on either uh, micro thin injections. And you want to do an injection that is, you know, very, very close to mimicking the body's endogenous production and release. So that's going to either be daily or every other day. Uh, in a perfect world, you want to inject daily because again, you're going to mimic the diurnal pulse of testosterone for both males and females by doing that. Now, but is that realistic joy? Because again, most people are busy. They have interesting lives. They're traveling. Who's going to inject themselves every day? Very few people. Now I know, I truthfully do know this. I know thousands of people that do because they make that morning daily injection part of their routine. You know, it's like brushing your teeth or meditating or doing your journal, your gratitude journal or whatever. So it just becomes a part of their life. But the second uh, most, uh, you know, efficient would be transdermal. Now for women, you know, you can go in the inner thighs, you know, the vaginal lips, uh, you know, some people will go, uh, you know, depending on the solution now, like in the inner, uh, you know, outer arms, it, truthfully, it should be somewhere close to center mass. Again, just for uh, crossing the blood brain barrier, getting into circulatory system, the most efficient way um, for men. Uh, and this is how I do it, by the way, now after 17 and a half years of uh, injections, transcrotal. So you're going to place a compounded 2%, uh, two, which is a 200 milligram uh, gram mall cream. And you can either use uh, HRT or TRT base. Again, you know, all the compounders make that. Uh, there's now new formulations in the marketplace called atrivacious. And again, just like in my business, you know, they, they claim, oh, it's liposomal. So it, 
you know, absorbs better and it's, you know, uh, lipophilic. So it's absorbing in the skin or through the skin better. But in truth, like when you really start looking at the tests, they all absorb about the same way. Uh, it's just another way that the pharmaceutical companies make money by telling you that it's liposomal and it's more expensive. But between all three of those delivery systems, if you put it on the base of the scrotum for a man, the scrotum is, eight, this is scientifically proven, by the way, there's like eight studies now. Uh, it's eight times more efficient from an absorption standpoint at that, at the skin, at the base of the scrotum. Uh, again, because of the very thin nature of the membrane of the skin right there. So if you place it right there, first thing in the morning, uh, you're going to get a very, very similar uh, release to, you know, your actual natural production of testosterone. Now, you know, some people, and, and again, this is scientifically proven, uh, when they initiate that type of therapy, we'll have a DHT spike, which is dihydrotestosterone, because again, uh, right there in that place location, you will get a higher uh, androgen signal from DHT release, but anything that would cause um, a noticeable, like, uh, you know, a PSA elevation, or even maybe like a person would feel like they're starting to have a little bit of hair loss from it. It's totally transient. Again, this has been studied um, and, you know, it will go away after like a couple of weeks, just depends on the, on the patient. The good news about transcrotal testosterone therapy is because of that increase in DHT signaling, um, you will have better sexual function. You'll have stronger, thicker erections, uh, and, and it doesn't seem to cessate like it would if you were using uh, injectable preparation. But beyond that, everything is equal. A lot of people say, well, what's better for, you know, uh, endurance or muscle gain or dopamine signaling or, you know, improved cognition? And I always say none, they're equal, right? So when they're done right, but uh, just to compare and contrast, if you're going to use injectable daily or every other day. Uh, and if you're going to use transdermal for a man, it's at the base of the scrotum. And for a woman, it's like inner thighs or vaginal, right? Now, the other formulations, or, or I should say uh, delivery systems, they are formulations uh, that a lot of people use, which are fraught with errors or pellets. And the reason that is, and I've talked about this at length, I've been on many podcasts to talk about this, pellets molecularly cleave differently in every individual, right? Because every individual is biochemically unique. So some people can have a pellet inserted and it, it works exactly as it's intended. You know, one pellet every eight to 10 weeks and they feel great. You know, the pellet lessens towards the end and they are okay, right? But the average person who injects, excuse me, uh, has a pellet inserted, cleaves the, 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 tes the, the testosterone at different rates and speed. And so you see a lot of times uh, people run out right? There are eight week insertion and five weeks they're dying because their body is already cleaved through all of the testosterone ester. Uh, and then, you know, it's becomes a mess. The other issue with, um, in, uh, pellets, which I really don't like is that you're relying on a non-surgical doctor to insert a pellet and you will see a lot of botched surgeries. I have an entire desktop folder which for confidentiality purposes, I cannot show you, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't even have the right for these guys to send me these emails, but they're always like sending me the emails saying, look at this, I have an abscess, you know, or a cyst, you know, and I look at them and I'm like, delete, why did you send me that? But, you know, I've <laughs> seen crazy pellet insertion. So I hate pellets, period. You know, again, I don't want to right. say that there isn't a place and a time because for all medications, there's always a place and a time, right? Like even the most horrible big pharma preps, you know, there's still somebody out there that can use them for something, but I'm anti pellets because of that. Um, mm -hmm. And now they have, you know, there's guys out there now they've got an oral. Now the problem with the oral is it works great for women, but it doesn't work well for men because it's not strong enough to truly optimize a man. It will for a woman. So they're the new ones. I think it's called the There's probably some other ones now that are out there now that are FDA approved. You know, this is a 30 year old uh, pharmaceutical preparation from Europe, and it used to be called Andriol, you know, and all the bodybuilder, you know, performance enhancement guys in the 70s and 80s, uh, you know, would take that if they could get a hold of it, you know, towards the end of their competition cycle, because it was such a mild androgen, but it still gave them like a tiny bit of, 
you know, anabolic signaling, you know, that testosterone wouldn't. And the reason they would use that is because it didn't prov- it didn't create uh, water retention like a higher dose of cypionate or anenthate, you know, injectable testosterone. But they always knew, and we, we know now, that because it's oral, it, you know, has to pass through the liver, you know, and it never produced the same results that a transdermal or an injectable formulation or preparation would. So even, you know, so again, here we go, here we are, big pharma, reinventing the wheel 30 to 40 years later, selling this to doctors. I see this all the time because I have a lot of physicians, you know, who follow me uh, in the integrative and the functional medicine space who will email me about these things. And I'll tell them, don't prescribe them. You know, don't use them because you're not going to get any benefit with a man. Uh, You might with a woman, but again, you're taking an oral testosterone formulation that's more expensive because it's newer. Um, you know, and again, recently FDA approved and, you know, you're not going to get better than you already have the tried and true, tried and true, uh, transdermal and injectable formulations. So like, you know, stay away. There's other ones we could talk about like trochies and patches, but I mean, again, they're all compared to the two tried and true worthless. Hmm. Wow. This is so fascinating. So helpful. Yeah. This is great information for everybody. Um, for those people who are still not quite clear on the benefits of testosterone like maybe you can just quickly list what they do for men and women sure i mean it's honestly a great question um so basically testosterone is the essential lifeblood molecule right like it's a it's it's what differentiates us sexually you know between male and female like i always tell people this that like in utero the reason a woman is different than a man is because a man has a higher testosterone signal it's literally that simple like if you take a woman and you give her you know, high levels of testosterone, not therapeutic, we're talking about super physiologic, you make them into a dude. I mean, it's literally that simple. I mean, hence, we've all seen like, you know, these bodybuilder women that abuse steroids, mostly anabolics, and they look like dudes, you know, they got a deep voice, and they become physically, you know, necks and shoulders, you know, they look like a guy, because again, this is what testosterone truly does. So when you understand that, you understand how powerful of a molecule it is. I mean, essentially it is the lifeblood molecule for human beings. Um, so when you have a, uh, you know, a, um, a deficiency, okay. And obviously, as you know, Joy, I mean, if you live in a major city today and anywhere in the world, we are under siege, right? Like the biochemical onslaught from the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the blue light coming out of our screens, uh, you know, you cannot escape it. So most people are suffering hormonal deficiencies and declines and don't even know it, you know, and then if we went deeper and you know this, but if we went deeper, the medical schools are not teaching doctors about hormone optimization, right? Like this is something that you have to learn on your own, you know, in your practice, because it's again, big pharma doesn't want people to be hormonally optimized because then they don't need drugs that, you know, that big pharma makes money off of as they age and start to decline. But you know, in truth, you know, very simply, you need an optimized uh, set of hormones from, you know, thyroid, from testosterone and from your pancreas uh, as you age, because if you don't, your body is going to start declining. You're going to have less muscle, higher body fat. You're going to be, you know, metabolically dysregulated, you know, all sorts of things become softer. You know, the one other thing I didn't mention, which is very important is that, you know, testosterone improves dopamine signaling. So you have more energy, uh, you have way better cognition. The number one symptom of a testosterone deficiency for both men and women is literally cognitive decline, you know, and very few people understand that. Uh, but, you know, the, the symptom that most do- guys and women complain of when they go to their, say, PPO or primary care doctor who knows nothing about hormone optimization is like, well, doc, I feel like shit at two o'clock. I want to go home and take a nap. And so then that doctor not knowing anything about hormones is going to be like, oh, well, I got just the thing for you. And they recommend or, you know, write them a script for, you know, brain, brain altering, you know, medication. And if it's a guy and now even with women with labor, what's the, what's the women's, uh, you know, uh, uh, hormone, not hormone, but uh, women, the women's sexual function drug, I forget what it's called, libidzerin or something, but they write you a script for brain and for, you know, penis or, or, you know, some sort of sexual dysfunction stuff. And so then the guy or the girl goes home. And both of those drugs mask the root cause, which again is a hormonal deficiency and literally joy lead to worse root cause issues because we now know that Wellbutrin and, uh, you know, uh, 
all the brain stuff. I can't even remember all half the Prozac, half of these drugs now cause a further disruption in the hip, the hypogonadal axis. So it actually declines uh, testosterone even further. I mean, you, sub, you put a man on that for 15 to 18 months and they have no testosterone, you know, and I can go on and on where there's so many different drugs, statins. I mean, again, I can go on and on and on. There's so many drugs that actually suppress or depress, uh, you know, the HPT and HPGA axis, which again, just causes further dysregulation hormonally. So now the person male or female just becomes a mess, right? You know, they have all sorts of other effects, but when you're optimized hormonally, you have unlimited energy. I mean, you're basically like me, right? You're like this hyper kinetic person. Who's like, what? it's four 30 in the afternoon. I've had a day I've been going since five, and I'm still fully energized, right? Because again, I'm hormonally optimized. I, you know, take therapeutic testosterone. Uh, I take a therapeutic dose of uh, desiccated thyroid, you know, to bump and modulate my thyroid. I'm also using metformin. Um, um, you know, I do use uh, peptides um, and, you know, various other stuff, you know, intermittently throughout the year. Uh, but this is the difference, you know, like a person who's not hormonally optimized, who's 50, you know, I'm 51 now, um, you know, is on the the slow, you know, gradual, if not, you know, horrendous steep decline, because you just cannot maintain your biological system functionality um, if your hormones aren't optimized. So, I mean, it's really the difference between night and day. And as I say always to anybody about this, the differentiation is so stark that you will really look at your life pre-hormonal optimization and post. And, and when, I, when I say like, because you'll ask me, and maybe the person who watching this is thinking this, like, well, when do I start? You start as soon as you start feeling like shit. And unfortunately, there's a lot of young people, as you know, now in their late 20s who are already suffering for hormonal deficiency. In fact, there's a doctor that I've had on my podcast. It's a woman. I forget her name. She's amazing. And she says that if you took a random sampling of 100 women under the age of 30 in the United States, actually, she says North America today, and you tested them, you would find that almost all of them are uh, chemically castrated. They have higher, high levels of estrogen and no testosterone, you know, and for men, it's the same. So, I mean, like, you know, we are in an environment now where people are being absolutely decimated from all angles. And, you know, the biggest tool in the tool belt is optimizing your hormones. Yeah, sure. You can optimize nutrition, you know, you can exercise, you can eat a, you know, insulin controlled diet, you know, you can change uh, the, uh, you know, dysregulation in your microbiome of your gut, you know, you can start doing things, but it's like, I always say, like, if you don't have optimized hormones, you don't have the energy to make all those other changes, you know, optimizing your diet, changing the way you eat, you know, meal prepping, doing all that, like without optimized hormones, you're not going to even have the energy to do that stuff, right? Like maybe if you're wealthy, you can hire somebody to do it, but you still, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's one foot, you, you can't put the cart in front of the horse. You know, you have to have optimized hormones to truly understand like the energy expenditure and requirement necessary to do all the other things that you want to do, you know, as you live your life. And clearly, if I didn't have optimized hormones, I definitely would not be as healthy, you know, as I act and as I feel, because, you know, that is the stimulus or the impetus that allows me to do all the other stuff because I have enough energy to do that. Very interesting explanation of, of testosterone. So I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, great, you know, I, let me check my level and see where I'm at. So both men and women, um, so they may or may not find, well, they probably will find doctors that can test it, but a lot of doctors will be either unwilling to replace it because yep. the level is not under what's, exactly. you know, normal because they, they kept the level so low 300, right? So if it's, it's, above actually, it, it's actually, lower than that now. They continually to lower what I call the standard mean deviations. So the ends of the normal normalcy ranges. So now, if you can believe it, it's like 170 at the lower oh end God. for LabCorp and 746 high end. It's unbelievable. I mean, if I was going to put my tinfoil hat on and say that this is a conspiracy, you know, I could say that. But, you know, <laughs> traditionally dogmatic doctors will say, oh, no, Jay, it's not a conspiracy. It's just that people are fat. And the fatter our society gets, the more the hormonal, uh, you know, lower ends top off. And so they got a point, you know, it is based on obesity. I mean, look, this, this is crazy, by the way. And this was, as I told you, I just lectured at the biohacking Congress 
uh, in Las Vegas on Sunday. It was really awesome. There were a lot of really smart, you know, clinicians and researchers that presented. A, 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 an RN, you know, was talking about intermittent fasting, and she had a really deep, profound lecture. And dude, the data. It's incredible. Mm. The last data that we had about obesity in North America was 2018 before the scamdemic, right? So it's like, here we are now, four years later, and health is so bad, Joy, in the United States. And, I, and I'll, I'll focus on the United States because you and I are in the United States, but it really is the West. 70% of all men and women over the age of 40 are obese, not fat obese, wow. like metabolically dysregulated. Basically they're ticking time bombs, right? We both know that they are going to get one of the various diseases of aging, whether it's heart disease, diabetes. I mean, they're all probably type two diabetes as, as I say that, but you know, those things lead to other horrible things like type three diabetes, which is, you know, you're especially, you know, Alzheimer's neurodegenerative disorder, you know, all these, you know, brain induced disease states that come later in life. So it's like, when you start realizing how bad it is, you, you, you see the importance of having a physician who understands the importance of optimizing the hormones. Because as the top doctors out there now in this space will tell you, first line of defense for type two diabetes or metabolic disorder dysregulation disease is hormonal optimization. So the smart people now literally are prescribing testosterone and modulating thyroid at the first incidence or onset of type two diabetes. Yes, it's a dietary interventional lifestyle. Yes, you have to lower your carbohydrates. Yes, you have to start improving your movement patterning. But again, if you don't have the energy because your hormones are just you know, decimated, it's not gonna matter all the advice and the, you know, the wellness coaching in the world is not gonna do a, you know, a bit of good until that person has the energy to make change, right? And the only way they're going to have energy to make change is to have their hormones optimized. So I, I'm glad in a lot of ways that now more and more doctors are seeing the importance of becoming hormonally optimized. But to your original question and point, you know, this is not something that you can take to your PPO doctor. It's just not going to be that way. And so I always say like, look, if you're one of those people that says, hey man, all I can afford is my copayment. It's $40 and these are the doctors I can go to. Well, then guess what? You're not going to get hormonally optimized because if in the event of a miracle, and yes, there are outliers out there and sure there's Kaiser doctors that are writing scripts for hormones for certain people, but they're not specialists. They're not, you know, specializing, working with thousands of male and females on, a horm on, on, on optimizing their hormones. So it's like, you know, I always say, and this is, you know, important for this podcast, like, if you're a male or, or man or woman, male or female, you know, concerned about, you know, what I call living a fully optimized life. If you cannot afford to spend $2,500 to $10,000 a year on your personal health, then you have your, you have your priorities completely out of whack. Because as you know, it's really, you got to look at it as you can't afford not to. One myocardial infarction, one, you know, type two diabetes issue, gout, you know, glaucoma. These are $100,000 cost of healthcare, regardless of the level of your benefits and your deductible. And people don't understand this until they go through it, you know, and that's why my wife, you know, she has this amazing comment that I've used in so many things I've done in my life, but she's like, most people don't care about their health until they don't have their health. Hmm. Right. And then but that's where you become, right? So it's like these people that say like, I can't afford that doctor. He wants to charge me or she wants to charge me $500 a month to optimize my hormones. I'm like, bro, if you have a heart attack, you would have begged and pleaded to be paying that $500 a month. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and I know there's docs that are more than that. And there's of course docs that are less than that. But it's, again, I always, it comes back to it. It's in my course. If you're a six figure wager in the West and you're not spending, you know, six to 10 grand a year on your personalized healthcare, everything is backward for you because you are going to end up in that, you know, in that guy. And I see this all the time. And I'm sure you see this too. You know, the 50, the 45 to 60 year old person, patient who comes in, who's got everything in, you know, done, they, they built their company, they got 10 million in the bank. And now they have one foot in the grave because they are an absolute metabolic emergency, yeah. right? They're obese. They're sick. They literally are inflamed. Their face is red. They struggle to breathe. I mean, you see it all the time. 
and they have all the money, but what are they going to do with it? They can't, they're dead. It's like, yeah. and, and, and then they come to you or they come to me and they're like, I want you to put me on a six month program. And you're like, dude, you just took 45 years to look like you do. Like, well, I've even seen people who outwardly looks good, you know, these very successful people, but they're eating junk, but they think, oh. okay, I'm exercising, I'm exercising it off, but they are not doing well on the exactly. inside. They right. may look still pretty darn good, but they, things could happen any moment. Oh, totally. Totally. And we're not even talking about the whole idea of like, do you feel worth, you know, self-worth, right? Like, do you have lack of love and trust of self, right? Because you're right. Because all of the external doesn't mean shit if you don't feel good internally about who you are and why you do it. But yeah, so I see that all the time. But, um, you know, for me, this is primary. As soon as you're 35, let's just use that as a baseline. And it can be younger, you know, depending on who you are and where you live. Um, but as soon as you're 35, you should absolutely be getting your blood work done at least, at least at a minimum once a year. Now, if you work with a great doctor, you know, and you're blessed to meet someone like you or other optimization physicians, like that's part of your deal. Like that's in your bag. Right. But if you're just a person who's watching this podcast, not doing that, you know, you can go on to private lab companies. I say this all the time, you know, there's private MD labs, you know, I have a big national nationwide uh, affiliates slash sponsorship with them. You know, I have a landing page. I send people all the time. There's three different levels. You know, I call it you know, the broke level. There's the medium level. And then there's like, Hey man, I want to know everything about me from a biomarker standpoint, you know, the anti-aging panel. And so it's like, you know, a different level for everybody, but that is, you know, the, the quickest way to solve a problem is obviously, you know, having awareness of what may or may not be the problem. And if you don't have that issue where it's like, okay, how do I know I'm what I'm working with? Like you can't even begin, right? So that's always step one is like getting your labs done, you know, understanding if you have a clinical need, a, an actual deficiency. And you kind of said it earlier. Um, doctors nowadays, not the not specialists, but PPO, HMO, family care, you know, family doctors um, are literally running their, their businesses now on avoiding the state medical licensing boards, right? So like, they're not going to write a script for testosterone to somebody that comes in off the street because like, I don't know anything about testosterone and I don't want to have that red letter, you know, mark that says, you know, going through insurance that I have a patient on testosterone. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that people have to worry about or not worry about, but think about like, why would you want to be working with a doctor who A, is only half educated on doing this and B, could literally email you one day and say, I'm sorry, I can't see you as a patient anymore because I have you on testosterone and my insurance company said I can't do that, right? So it's like, you have to work with a physician that, as I call it, and it has an experiential body of work. They've been prescribing hormones. I say, you know, in my course, I say at a minimum for 10 years. Hmm. Like I wouldn't work with any doctor who hasn't been prescribing for 10 years. I mean, it's literally the, the, the to what I call them the de novo minimum standard now you know, there's docs I work with that have been prescribing testosterone for 24 years, right? So it's like 10 years is like, you know, enough. There's enough people out there that have been doing this that can do this. And again, if you're in LA or you're in New York or you're in Miami or Houston or Atlanta or San Francisco or San Diego or Chicago, there's plenty of doctors that you can pick from. You know, you can't come at me like when I was involved in this at the beginning when there was nobody. You know, now it's like, there's a ton of people to pick from. It's just, you got to do your homework. You got to ask the right questions. I mean, so much so, and I'll, I'm happy to send this to you. You know, I created a document like five years ago. and We actually just recently updated it uh, for the course on questions to ask your doctor. Mm. Ten questions to ask your doctor, whether it's a male or female, whether you're a male or female, before you choose them as your hormonal optimization doctor, right? Because like, there's just like some very basic things that like you should be able to get an acceptable answer. And if you can't bounce, you go find another one because there's plenty, you know? And that's the thing is like, you know, there's a lot of doctors nowadays that are prescribing hormones or prescribing peptides. They're prescribing all sorts of adjuvants, but it's like, who's educating them? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, well, I think the it's the compound pharmacy that educates them. 
In bigger cities, it's great um, to find a doctor. I, I think anything that has a sounding of functional medicine, integrated medicine, anti-aging medicine, right. those are probably the doctors or nat even naturopathic doctors. Yep. Those are people you want to go to. Yep. Um, but, uh, but for a lot of people, they can't find anybody good that's right. close enough to them. And they right. are just having trouble. Um, or some people may not want to use a, you know, the, the, the hormone itself. Right. Maybe you want to see what can I do to naturally boost my testosterone level. So what can you tell men and women who want to do it naturally? So that's a really good question. And that's also in my course. That's actually in module one of my course. So um, it's, the, again, everybody's biochemically unique. We're all individual humans. You know, what works for one person won't work for the other. But I, you know, one of the doctors that I work with, Dr. Rob Kalmanark, you know, he's a legend in this space. Uh, he's in Dayton, Ohio. He's actually moving his entire practice to Florida because Ohio is just a disaster, you know, from an obesity standpoint. Um, but very well known, speaks at all the conferences, you know, very close friend of mine. He's been on my podcast many times. But, uh, you know, I interviewed him specifically for the course to ask him that question. So the question is, how, what is the percentage of people in today's day and age, knowing that we're being bombarded, in, you know, in the biochemical onslaught of everything, <laughs> the internet of things, right? Uh, what is the percentage of people who can stay naturally optimized? And his answers are fascinating and shocking. And again, 20, he's, he's been prescribing hormones now. His is his 25th year. He's an emergency medicine trained doc. And he started doing this again by chance or luck or accident or whatever. But I mean, he's a master of this. He's got all sorts of celebrity clients he works with. And he says that if he goes by age, so if you're 40 years age, of age, male or female, and you're totally type A, anally retentive, and you cross every I, I mean, you, you know, dot every I and cross every T, and you know, you do everything, he's like 15% of people can stay optimized if you're one of those people. Now, what gets weird is when you're at 50 or older and you're one of those people, he says, one and a half to two percent. Wow. So the answer is you can't do it in truth. If you live in LA or New York and you are a 50-year-old multimillionaire, you know, entrepreneur, you know, white collar professional, and you're not type A, good luck. It's almost impossible. I mean, I mean, you know this. I mean, the the, the water systems in LA are so contaminated. You know, Dr. Anthony J. You know, the Mayo Clinic researcher. The guy's written all the books on estrogen, you know, estrogen in the in the in the water and the food supply and the environment. He's like, you have to put in a massive filtration system in your home. You have to put in a filter in your shower. You know, there's so many things that you again have to do just to prevent getting bombarded by phytoestrogens you know, estrogenic compounds, BPA, phthalates, all these things, plasticizers. I mean, it's insane, right? And the other thing that, you know, because he wrote the book in 2018, he's actually doing a, re I just talked to him this week on, you know, on a phone call, but he's re redoing it. He's doing part two. Joy, the electromagnetic radiation that is coming out of these things yes. are literally decimating our biological systems. Like we don't even comprehend yet the third and the second and third order effects of what these things are doing. But I mean, he knows because this is what he studies, but it's like all of this shit is so bad. So when people ask that question, like, how can I do this naturally? Cause I'm afraid of using hormones. Well, you really can't, you know, if you're genetically blessed and you're again, you're super anal retentive, then maybe you under 5% of people can do this. But it's really, really difficult. I mean, it's it's so difficult. And I, you know, again, I'm definitely pro natural optimization before clinical intervention. But it's becoming harder and harder and harder to say to a person that you're ultimately at some point not going to have to have uh, some form of clinical intervention. I mean, how many guys? Here's the question that we really have to ask, and nobody asks: Is what is the percentage of men and women walking around on the streets today, forty and up, who have who have a severe testosterone or uh, progesterone or estradiol or all three combined deficiency. I mean, again, I don't know the answer, but if I do my Jay Campbell look around test, <laughs> it's pretty high. 
Yeah. And, and you've got a lot of these people have nowhere to go. They don't know anything about this. They're not watching podcasts that you and I are on. They're not reading books on hormones. You know what I mean? And again, all they have is their first line of defense is their primary care doctor. And that person doesn't know jack shit. So yeah. it's like, what do these people do? You know, in, in truth, I mean, again, you know, the way I say it is like, you just have to take ownership of your health. You know, I like to call it, you know, I borrowed this from a doctor that I work with, but you know, he says you have to become the proactive scientist of your own health. Hmm. No one's pouring through your medical records. No one's looking, you know, at your interventions, like, you know, oh, I see Mr. Campbell is now turned 51. And, you know, you got to do this, this, and this, this year. So, I mean, like you have to take ownership of everything yourself. Now we're way past, you know, the family doctor, you know, intervening on your behalf at some point in time. I mean, it's all about you personalizing your healthcare. And like I said, you know, realizing that you're going to have to spend money, you know, whether it's four grand, eight grand, 10 grand. I mean, I spent, my wife and I both spend more than $10,000 a year on our personal health. Are you kidding me? I mean, I have void doctors. I mean, I was in a serious car accident in August of last year, and I was literally, I'm lucky to be here. Right. Like I turned left out of my subdivision and a 74 year old man ran into me. Just, I mean, I was gone. And then the, uh, the airbag deployed and hit me right here and caused a third degree concussion and brought me back. <laughs> I was like, yes, I'm out of here. And then boom, shit, I'm still here. <laughs> but I mean, it was like, you know, even then, like, do you want to go to the hospital? No, I refuse. I'm good. Uh, you know, uh, I, nurse myself back to health. I had a third degree concussion. Uh, you know, I called all my brain surgeon docs and stuff like that. Hey, you know, what could you do? You know, my wife did the first two or three days, but I mean, I just, I was obviously in good health, right? I take care of myself. So, I mean, I recovered faster than somebody not in good health, but it's just kind of like, like I would have spent anything right to like, make sure that I'm good. So, you know, that's where people have to get to is like, okay, first you have to take care of yourself. You have to do your blood work. You got to know what you're working with. And then if there is a deficiency, and again, most people have a deficiency, then it's like, okay, I want to make sure that I'm going to work with the doctor who can help me. I, I need to know how to vet that doctor. Uh, and I need to know if I can, you know, cause you said it, it was a good point. I need to know if I can work with this person via telemedicine. Can I have a call like you and I are having right now, right? Like it's commonplace now to have a call with your doctor like this. And there's no reason that you can't. I know a lot of doctors talk about supplements, you know, like in anti-aging conferences to talk about supplements that can enhance and boost testosterone levels. So do you not believe that they really make a big dent? In, in well, I will tell you this, and I don't want to like ruffle anybody's feathers. There is nothing other than testosterone that will actually optimize testosterone. There are all sorts of supplements like ashwagandha, Tonkat Ali, you know, things that will enhance libido, but they will not increase free or bioavailable testosterone in any level other than a transient increase. And again, my book studies all of this. We looked into all of the research for 50 years on testosterone boosting supplements, and there's no proof. In fact, there's actually a lot of proof that shows that a lot of them actually lower circulating free testosterone, again, transiently, but none of them will do anything. I mean, I love, you know, I hate to say it, but you know, the only thing that those things literally do is take money out of the pockets of people who are paying for them because they don't do anything. And again, you continually see the commercials mm. with ex pro athletes, mm -hmm. you know, celebrities, whomever, you know, promoting these things, you know, and then of course the people, the general public that watches them are like, well, if so-and-so is doing it, you know, they still look good. They're virile, blah, blah, blah. So then they buy it. But I mean, I'm telling you, man, there's nothing. And I, again, I, 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 I'm always pro pro natural optimization, right? Like lower your carbohydrates, control for your insulin exercise, you know, get more sunlight, get better sleep. You know, sleep is a huge hormonal dysregulator, but all of those things, when you compare living in these contaminated worlds that we live in now, testosterone is the biggest tool in the tool belt. And there's no reason that anyone should fear side effects. I mean, again, in my course, in my second module, you know, we really debunk the idea that there are side effects with this because there aren't, the, there are side effects, but the side effects come from not knowing what you're doing. And yeah. unfortunately the average doctor has no clue when they prescribe hormones to people. And the other thing is, and this is important, 
the average doctor who doesn't have a clue is also prescribing this, 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 and this to that patient. And then that patient and then that doctor too have no idea what all those chemical agents are doing in combination versus if you do this right, you start off with testosterone in isolation, okay? And you do that after you've tried to boost pregnenolone and boost vitamin D3, you know, and all, again, these steroid, you know, precursor vitamins, which are really technically hormone or, or, or hormonal agents, hormonal modulating agents before you do that. But again, I don't ever see that because at the end of the day, the clinic, I call them windmill clinics, is trying to make money. So how are they not going to make money if a patient male or female comes in and says, Hey doc, I'm feeling the blues. I went to my PCP and he's like, you need to go get on testosterone. You know that, I mean, obviously that would be lucky if the guy actually said that, or the woman actually said that, but in the case that they do, and they send them to these clinics mm -hmm. and these clinics job are to prescribe hormones and, 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 you know, you go on Google in LA or Orange County or San Diego or San Francisco, and you put TRT or TOT even works now as a search term. And you'll get like 18 clinics that come up that say, we do hormones for $2.99 a month. Mm. And then the patient goes into that clinic and says, hey, I saw your ad. You know, I want to get on testosterone. You know, my, my PCP or my, my HMO doctor said I have a deficiency. Here's my labs, blah, blah, blah. And then before you know it, they're sitting there. Yeah, we could also put you on this. And this, and this, and this, and this is clinically proven to do this. And then the person walks out and he's got like a $950 bill. Mm. And he has absolutely no idea all the different agencies he's taking. And then a month later, he feels like absolute dog shit because mm. he's literally got nine or 10 chemicals in his body that he has no idea what is doing what. The doctor at the windmill clinic doesn't either because the doctor at the windmill clinic is probably just signing his name on there because like the people that run the clinic are the ones that are telling them what drugs to take and pills and supplements. So it just becomes a mess. Yeah. You know, like any field, cause I, I, I do a lot of stem cell therapy and I, there's so many people who just, oh, I can only imagine says, we therapy. do stem cells, but there's so few who actually understand what they're doing. Right. So, right. but, but I want to discuss one last point before sure. we wrap up is this, you know, what doctors scare patients about, oh, testosterone, that's going to exacerbate your, your PBH, right? Your, your prostate, you know, enlargement, your PSA. So they use that to scare a lot of people. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, it's a total lie. Again, in my book, and, you know, if you talk to Dr. Abraham Morgenthaler, who's really the world's leading, you know, uh, Harvard educated physician, you know, who's basically disproven all of the uh, you know, perception, perceptional awareness of like what causes what, right? Like, so, I mean, again, a lot of dogma in uh, and inertia in medicine is that testosterone, you know, therapeutic testosterone causes heart ailments and causes prostate disease or can even cause prostate cancer. It's all bullshit. In fact, the opposite, the inverse is true. And again, this is now scientifically proven. Morgan Taylor and his team have put out hundreds of meta review analysis, but it's an inverse of uh, the, the statements that were original that it causes. And it's now known that like a deficiency of testosterone is going to cause BPH, which is obviously, you know, benign per prostate hypertrophy. And as you know, Joy, you know, every man aging is going to have BPH at some point. It's just a natural occurrence of the prostate enlarging as we, as we get older, but they now know again, through all the research that, you know, Dr. Morgenthaler has done that, a man who is optimized on testosterone is going to have less uh, hypertrophy of the prostate. So now again, it's, it's all been put to, put to bed. Same thing with the heart. You didn't ask, but I'll say it. You know, there is absolutely unequivocally now they know that therapeutic testosterone or optimized levels of testosterone are cardioprotective, literally cardioprotective. So again, if you are a man and you're suffering of a deficiency, which again, I would say it's the majority of guys in everyday society, the likelihood that you're going to suffer some form of a cardiovascular incident or illness is high. I mean, it's, it's literally high. And, and again, it just stands to reason, like if you're optimized with blood testosterone levels and your heart is pumping regularly and you're obviously exercising and you're doing all the things that you would necessarily not do because you have a deficiency, which is lacking energy, then of course your heart is going to atrophy. Of course, you're going to have, you know, 
free oxy radical buildup and you're going to have vascular, you know, illness because you're going to have all sorts of artery clogs and, you know, all these other things that happen, you know, over wear and tear of aging and living. Right. But like the more energy you have, again, from, you know, optimized testosterone levels, the less chance that you're going to have, you know, all the stuff that happens from someone who's less active. I mean, if we were talking about, you know, consciousness, it would be about vibration. The more energy, the higher the vibrational aspect of the being, the less likely you're going to have sludge and build up and again, free oxy radicals and waste and degradation that, you know, someone of a lower vibration has. So it's like everything, you know, goes back to vibration, you know. And so it's like the more energy you have, which is clearly going to come from optimized hormones, the less likely you're going to have, you know, all of these, you know, disease states earlier rather than later. I mean, look, this physical body, your physical body, they all, we all die, right? Like our energy that, you know, encompasses our soul or whatever you want to call our spirit, you know, that to me is infinite, but these physical bodies have expiration dates. So the more you take care of the physical body now or the vessel, the longer, you know, you get to keep that sell by date going, you know what I mean? That's kind of the way I look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, Jay, this has been a fascinating, such, you know, such a helpful discussion. I think it really, really enriched people's understanding about testosterone and just, you know, a lot of aspects of their health and even healthcare. So I really applaud you for, you know, what you've contributed to, you know, to people's health and, and to the whole, you know, hormone replacement uh, field. Um, so where can people find you to learn more about what you can share and, and how maybe they can get help from you directly? How can they reach you? Yeah, for sure. And, and just let me say again, thank you for asking great questions. And I appreciate being on here. And for anybody who watches the show, uh, I actually give away the TOT Bible now for free from a PDF standpoint. So they can just go to J-A-Y, middle initial C, and then my last name spelled out. So it's jccampbell.com forward slash free books. And you'll get a copy of the Testosterone Optimization Therapy Bible PDF. And then you'll also get, you know, one of my highest selling books of all time on fasting, which is called the Metabolic Blowtorch Diet. So you guys can download the PDF for there for free. But uh, I'm easily found uh, on uh, social media. On uh, Twitter is where my primary, uh, I hang out at. And that's uh, my, my handle is uh, jcampbell333. Same thing on Instagram, jcampbell333. Uh, and if you want to just act, you know, get in t- touch with my team, uh, or work with me, you know, privately. I don't do uh, individual coaching anymore, but I do have a big private membership group, which is called FullyOptimizedHealth.com. You know, there's uh, four or five hundred people in there, all amazing uh, men and women. You know, really live, living at their highest and best life. So, you know, you can go there. But uh, to, for inquiries and stuff like that, to reach me, just go to um, uh, contact at jccampbell.com. Amazing, wonderful. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. I love learning from you. Thank you, Joy. I appreciate the opportunity. Yes. Keep up the good work. Bye.